It may not host championship weekend anymore, but Homestead Miami Speedway still fills an extremely important role on the NASCAR calendar. You know how some tracks are called driver's tracks? I feel Homestead Miami Speedway stands out from other intermediates because it is very much a driver's track. Certain drivers love to rip the fence, do it better than others. Should be a great race this weekend. Let's bring in Ryan Stevens, analytical expert from wintherace.info to preview this weekend race. Ryan, it's been a while, but there's no better time to have you back on the show. Homestead Miami Speedway, round of eight. Let's start with Christopher Bell. He's the defending Homestead winner. Uh, obviously, losing last weekend at Las Vegas had to sting, but he's put together quietly the most consistent playoffs of anyone. Has a 5.7 average finish the last seven weeks. What do you see in Christopher Bell? Can he defend his Homestead title? Yeah, he's he's been on quite the run. Um, if I look at my true performance ranks on on win the race, uh, specifically in this package, the last four races he's been fourth best, finished third, fourth best, finished fifth, fourth best, finished seventh, and then the best and finished second, as we saw last week. So, um, if we look at tracks, you know, more specific to the track type of Homestead, you know, maybe just a little more tire wear, higher banked, uh, like intermediate type track. He's actually second in fast lap percentage this year, sandwiched between Reddick and Larson. So he's up there with like the two guys that everyone looks at as, you know, maybe the favorites to kind of rip the top here and, and be fast. Bell's doing it too. And one more interesting note on Bell. I did an 18 race sample of qualifying in 2023 and 24. Again, tracks most similar to this. He's won the pole seven times. So I would expect, you know, him to be starting up front there. So uh, yeah, I expect another strong run from Bell. Yeah, Christopher Bell's been very good in qualifying, especially, like you said, at the intermediate tracks. It's always nice when the data you provide backs up what I'm seeing with my eyes. Uh, we saw it at Las Vegas this last week, an important getting stage points, keeping track position. But you mentioned Kyle Larson. A stat that jumped out at me, a very basic stat, um, he only has one career win at Homestead. You'd think he has two or three or four the way we talk about him here. He did lead the most laps in last year's race, crashed into the sand barrels, as we know. But uh, Kyle Larson, do you consider him the the heavy favorite this weekend? Yeah, he's the rifle favorite. I still have nightmares about him crashing into those barrels. I just <laughs> I think a lot of people were like me, and we were kind of heavily invested from a whether it's a daily fantasy perspective or had some bets on him or something. We were, you know, just crying when he hit those. And I, I'm sure it sucked even worse for him, but... He's number one in my pre-practice and qualifying ranks for good reason. I mentioned he was top three in the fast lap percentage uh, in the sample size of tracks similar to Homestead this year. But one thing that really stuck out to me stat-wise is he's run over 51% of his laps inside the top three in those races. Uh, we're talking about Vegas, Kansas, Darlington, Charlotte. And he's led almost a third of the total laps in those races. So, wow. yeah, he's up front. He's leading. If something, something almost has to go wrong for him to not be – running inside the top three or leading laps and it happens i mean one i think he's raced here what 10 times he's won one race i mean that's it's tough i mean that just shows you how tough the sport is but yeah he is the rightful favor here yeah i, I think i i tend to agree with you there um flying under the radar this week perhaps is ryan blaney he led 53 laps and finished second here one year ago his teammate just locked into the championship four can the defending champion bounce back after a disappointing las vegas result what do you think of that ryan blaney's interesting uh because i think he's gotten better at homestead every year he's been here if you just look at the box scores you might think well what are you talking about he's had some rough finishes here you know before last year while that's true, if you look further into it, as a member of Penske, in 2018, he finished 17th, 2019, he finished 11th, 2020, he finished third. So he's trending in the right direction. Then 2021, he finishes 29th, but he was top 10 in stage two, and he was involved in a wreck in lap 201. Uh, 2022, finished 17th, top five in stage two, spins out lap 212. 2023, last year, finishes second, top three in both stages. So again, it's it's kind of similar to Larson. I would expect him to be running up front and he is the only one who can defeat himself. I know Logano was quoted saying he, I mean, he's gonna try, but he doesn't really care about this race anymore. He's worried about the championship. So I would imagine Penske putting 
all of their resources into giving Blaney a fast, fast car this weekend. Like Logano may show up to the track with the same exact setup as Blaney, and they'll kind of go take a different swings at it to sort of relay that info back to Blaney and Hassler so they can possibly help them out. So certainly that could be exactly. at least a slight advantage for the 12 this weekend. A couple more playoff drivers we have to mention. Denny Hamlin said on his podcast this week he is in must-perform territory, not must-win, Minus 27 points. We know how this race ended for him last year. He is a three-time Homestead winner historically. What do you make of Denny Hamlin this weekend? Although the finish wasn't there last year, like you said, I did have him rated out as a top five car. Yeah. In 2022, I had him ninth best, so there's a little improvement there. Uh, the first year of the Gen 7 car, I know Toyotas were struggling in certain places. If he can take another step forward, maybe he has a shot. The positives would be, if you look at tracks that were similar, I mentioned uh, Vegas, Kansas, Darlington. He was very, very strong at Darlington. Um, but the bad news is that was almost two months ago. And since then, it doesn't really seem like he's had a race winning car. So uh, I'm interested to see. He's one of the ones, uh, you know, we'll, I'll be watching closely during practice and qualifying. Uh, you know, I, I'm rooting for him. I would love to see him have a chance at a championship. But, you know, the way he's looked lately, I just feel like there's been four or five stronger cars every week. Yeah, no, I'm I'm like you. I root for fun stories and a Denny Hamlin championship four run in the same year he's suing the sanctioning body. Uh, that's a story that I can wrap my arms around. But will his pit crew uh, stick with him, prop him up this week? They have not helped that team out much in recent weeks. Um, one final playoff driver I have to mention. He's a two-time Xfinity winner at Homestead. I would argue this is the track that put him on the map. Tyler Reddick still looking for his first cup win. Another driver who, after the wreck at Vegas, needs a big day. What do the numbers suggest about Tyler Reddick, Ryan? Yeah, so actually, I noticed this when diving into Hamlin, but I was looking at how drivers performed uh, at the most recent race, you know, Las Vegas, and then heading into Homestead. So in 2023, four of the top five drivers in my true performance rank finished top five true performance at Homestead. So it kind of translated right into the following week. And we were talking about that before the show, you know, some of the stats are going to be similar last week heading into this week. Um, so that's probably not a good sign for Hamlin, who we just talked about, who wasn't strong last week, but could be a great sign for Tyler Reddick. Reddick was actually, you know, I said four out of five were top five. Reddick was not at Las Vegas last year. And then obviously was at Homestead. Now Reddick, had a very, very fast car at Las Vegas and heads right into Homestead. So I had him, I think, top three in my true performance ranks in that race, and now he heads to Homestead, a track that I think suits him a little better. So, yeah, I mean, I had mentioned him in the fast lap percentages up there. Uh, we were talking about Larson and Bell. He should be one of the rightful favorites here, and I look forward to watching him on Sunday. Yeah, I, I feel Kyle Larson has earned the right to be the favorite, but Tyler Reddick is probably the guy I, I like to pick in this race for all the reasons you just said. We've started to see some of that mid-season, regular season championship speed once again. He's qualified on the front row in back-to-back -back weeks. Two very different tracks, sure, but... I mean, Las Vegas, Homestead, a lot of similarities there. I know we're talking a lot about the playoff field. Some guys are like, hey, what about everybody else? Who is the best of the rest, in your opinion, Ryan? One of the drivers outside of the top eight who could make the most noise. So I'll stick with what I just was talking about. You know, who was strong last week that might bring that momentum into this week? One guy who really sticks out to me is Martin Truex Jr. Okay. Um he had top five incident adjusted speed on our site uh, at Las Vegas, finished top five, my true performance ranks. But if, if we look specifically at Homestead, he to me is one of the best drivers at Homestead. He qualified in the pole here last year. Unfortunately, that engine failed him during the race. In 2022, I had him second best to Larson in our true performance. In 2021, he led laps, finished third. 2020, he didn't finish top 10, but that was a race that included a rain caution and weird things. <laughs> Forgivable there. 2019, he led over 100 laps, finished second. The two races before that, he finished second and first. So, I mean, he is he is always up front here, leading laps in a, in a contender. One cool thing, too, is we talked about, you know, fun storylines of what to root for. One, we're rooting for Truex to get a win in his final season. That would be awesome. Two... He's running, I mentioned that win he had, 2017, that was to secure the championship at Homestead, and they're running back that paint scheme, the 2017 Bass Pro Shops paint scheme. It'd be just a sweet, 
fun storyline if he could win at Homestead, get a final win in his last year. Uh, I think it'd be great. And I think this is his best chance given the tracks left on the schedule. I think you're right about that for sure. Yeah, one to watch, Martin Truex Jr. Uh, Ryan, thank you so much for bringing the numbers as always. Excited for a good race here at Homestead Miami Speedway. It's not the championship track anymore, I guess, but it certainly plays a pivotal role in deciding the championship for. Uh, Kind of a bonus question for you, Ryan. Would you like to see Homestead return to the finale or where do you think the finale could end up here in a couple of years? I would like to see it return here. I mean, for a lot of the reasons, you know, I mentioned Bell, Larson, Reddick, Blaney. I just think, you know, and that's all three different manufacturers that I think that could that could win this race. It kind of brings everyone into play. Um, I, I love, I think it's more exciting when you see guys kind of ripping that top line and kissing the wall a little bit. I mean, it's it just makes it a little more exciting. Some more things can happen. Tire wear is another thing that I think is great. Bring some comers and goers throughout the long runs. So, yeah, I enjoy this a lot more than Phoenix. Uh, So I would love to see the championship be ran here. Yeah, fingers crossed. Maybe 2026 they can, at least for one more run, would love to see Homestead back in the championship slot. Always suited this place really, really nicely. Well, Ryan, I really appreciate you being back on the show. As always, folks watching at home, you can find more of Ryan's work at winthereace.info. I always link it down in the description below. Go check it out. Lots of good stuff over there. Ryan, thanks for being on. It's been great talking to you this year. Hope to talk to you again soon. Thank you. I really appreciate it.